Carrie Ashton here with Love Life and Disability. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Love Life and Disability with me, Kay Ashton. Today, I'm joined by Erica and Natasha from Parlable Dance. Their mission is to provide a safe space which is full of creativity for individuality, providing an opportunity for people with disabilities through dance. As someone who has been to a dance school in the past, I understand the importance of this and why it is required. So thank you so much for joining me today, Natasha and Erica. Pleasure. Hello, thanks for having us, Kay. Thank you. So I guess first and foremost is how did you become dancers and want to um, train and teach people about dance? Erica, do you want to go first? Sure, I'll start first. Um, I I grew up in a in a dancing household, so um, I've been dancing essentially forever. Um, and unfortunately, it wasn't really until post university that I kind of discovered the world of inclusive dance. Um, uh, and I was working with a company in New York City that had dancers with and without disabilities. Um, and then I moved over to the UK. Um, to get my master's. And while I was there, I saw the vast array of inclusive dance opportunities here. Um, and I started volunteering with a couple of companies and then um, met Natasha at one of them and <laughs> sort of worked up from volunteer up into lead facilitator there. Um, and then from there, we just, uh, yeah, it just kept going from there. <laughs> and what about yourself, Natasha? Um, yeah, similar to Erica, apart from the dancing family, definitely didn't have that. Um, <laughs> so uh, grew up doing ballet, tap and modern and uh, did a GCSE dance course and then went on to A-level dance. And it was my A-level dance teacher who introduced me to inclusive dance. She was doing a project with a local school um, with kids who had varying disabilities. And I just loved it. I just got the bug. And so when I okay. went, I went, went and trained at Trinity Lab and did my degree. And when it came to doing my dissertation, I thought, well, I want to do something around inclusion. Mm -hmm. And I had recently seen Kanduko Dance Company. So I decided to write my dissertation about them, ended up joining their youth company. And that was kind of my first um, experience of kind of really immersing myself in inclusive dance. And I've been teaching just over 20 years now and everything that I do is, is about inclusion. I mean, I've cool. had some kind of mainstream roles um, within colleges and things, but for the most part, my career has been about kind of driving forward inclusive practice and just kind of trying to get to the point really where it's just dance and it's not yeah. a separate thing. Yeah. And when you were first starting out and you was coming across the inclusion dance, would you say maybe more areas of the UK was doing this better than other areas maybe in the more built up areas opposed to more rural or do you think it was more um, level playing field it's really hard to know to be honest because I was in I was in one area so I knew what was going on for me yeah. I think I think it's quite widely known that it's sort of more saturated around London definitely there's there's more there are more companies more opportunities um, and then there's sort of pockets around the UK but definitely in the bigger cities um, where there's more funding, definitely it, it, there's there's more going on. Yeah. Um, but it's it's something that's really expanding and is becoming much more kind of a, a known uh, practice and 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 people wanting to find out more about it. Even through our most recent project, we discovered a bunch of inclusive companies that we didn't necessarily know existed and are doing great work in other other places that is that are not London. So. Wow. That's 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 good to hear though, and I, I and I do feel things are changing with the times as things do move forward. Because if I take when I was nine, so that's gosh, back in 1999, me and my brother was at a dance school in Manchester, and they 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 were fantastic. Don't get me wrong, but as an adult and I look back, I don't think they were truly inclusive so if we were to take the stages for example none of them were wheelchair accessible we didn't have any dancers in wheelchairs we had a lady who had Down syndrome we had myself with the scoliosis and I wore a back brace but it uh, for me it was my braces were always covered up where where for now if I'm out and about and I'm doing any sort of performing I don't mind it being on show and when I did acting it was on show but in dance, it appeared to be everything was basically covered up. 
and obviously all in like sparkly outfits and stuff. So I always had a bit of a costume problem at points. So or sometimes couldn't wear my brace for this, but I could wear it for that. And it was great, but yeah, I don't feel it was probably truly inclusive. If anything, it was you're not going to do too many dances because we don't want to strain your body sort of thing. So then you didn't do as many dances as maybe the rest of your peers. And I wasn't approached about those conversations. It was more, that's just the way it is. Yeah, it sounds as well like you're sort of trying to hide your disability rather yeah. than celebrate it. I think something that's really important about inclusive dance and, and our practice is it's about looking at the individual and what their strengths are and, and focusing on movement that suits somebody's body mm -hmm. that's that's come from somebody's um creativity so it, it properly is is showing them and their ability rather than kind of going you need to fit into that sparkly outfit and we need to hide you know hide your brace and you need to be yeah. doing what someone else is doing that's that's not being inclusive that's that's trying to make everybody conform exactly and like I say I, I do generally think a lot of things have moved forward and as you mentioned you know there are other companies now out there doing inclusivity so you know I mentioned Dank quite a bit on here the disability arts network community and they're doing great things and they have the triple c with the acting group as well and um, which is specifically around acting with those with um, disabilities so it is refreshing to see that there are more people out there doing things within the creative arts as well so what do you feel needs to change at the moment within dance when it comes to disability? I think there's probably, there are a lot of areas that need to change. I think there have been a lot of improvements over the years, but also a lot that needs to change, especially in regards to just basic access. Mm -hmm. um, but one point I just wanna make is that Natasha and I are very aware that we do not have disabilities. Um, and so part of what we're trying to work towards is making sure that we are aligned with people with disabilities and allies of people with disabilities mm -hmm. without trying to speak for them or say this is what needs to be changed. Um, so there are certainly some examples that, you know, we can give even just as you say, making stages wheelchair accessible, yeah. like just basic, basic accessibility needs. Um, but I didn't want to highlight anything without just making that that clear that we yeah. don't have disabilities. So we want to hear hear and work with those that do no and i think that's very important and especially as allies yourselves you know it's working with those with disabilities because then um, we can it's all about shared communication and helping to support one another to keep being inclusive and if other people in the world were, were similar to, to yourself natasha and erica and was willing to learn and work with people with disabilities and listen to them on how we can best um, support them and do things mm -hmm. it's so sometimes when I've run events unless they have a hearing loop unless they're wheelchair friendly I won't even entertain using them as a venue because you're not even meeting basic requirements and I think sometimes this is what some companies might need to do um, to showcase to other companies hang on a minute guys we can't really do that you, you need to start to be inclusive yeah, I, th I think what's really sad is that there's there's such a variety. There's, there's, so there's some companies who are just about managing to meet the basic requirement. Yeah. And then there's others who are doing it exceptionally well and, and you know, adding all these different layers of access, which is incredible. Um, and it seems like, I don't know, a lot of people sort of tick a box for, for, for the basic requirements. But I mean, I remember going to national dance events years ago. So I'm, I think about 15 years ago. Uh, a colleague of mine who's a wheelchair user was asked to give a speech as part of his presentation and nobody had thought about the fact that she couldn't get on the stage wow. so she, she was interviewed kind of down in the pit and it's just you know stuff like that and and I know that that was 15 years ago I don't think that the national organizations of that level would make those mistakes anymore but equally you know there's just so much to be done there really is we say that national organisations wouldn't do that, but all our COVID announcements at the moment doesn't have a BSL interpreter in the room like Glasgow. And I, I know that's the legal policies linked to Glasgow and stuff, but there's, I don't understand why England can't just go, right, we're going to get an interpreter in the room. Yeah. But they don't. And, you know, you're withdrawing basic stuff from people. It's, it's not cool. But <laughs> Natasha, um, we're lottery funded. And we're also Arts Council funded as well. How, how did all that begin and how long did that take? 
So the, so the Arts Council is, is funded by the lottery. So we're so our um, our initial project that we did during lockdown was was Arts Council lottery funded. Um, we it, yeah, it's, it's difficult. I mean, we we only launched in 2019, and we kind of had uh, aspirations to start classes and um, do lots of kind of face to face stuff. We've always been very interested in training opportunities and kind of giving people the chance to develop their careers in the way that we've been lucky enough to. Um, and so lockdown kind of brought this opportunity around where we thought actually there's something that we can get from this, this fact that everyone's connecting on Zoom and everybody's managing to work with each other miles away and, and all over the country. So we put together the idea of uh, creating a film where loads of different dance companies and facilitators around the country collaborated and it just kind of snowballed it was really exciting so you know everyone who we asked if they wanted to be involved was on board um and so uh, i guess that made a strong made for a strong application and we and we secured funding and we've actually just found out we secured Ace. another round of funding so it's really really exciting yeah and yeah. that one's with ace isn't it erica and um, for, for one of your next projects do we know what the next project's going to be um, so we're working on a few different, <laughs> a few different things, but um, one of them is a new graduate inclusive dance network. So we want to, uh, we'll be able to give more details in a couple of months, but we want to um, make sure that we are, we're worried that there's a gap, especially from mm -hmm. the pandemic with new graduates being able to find opportunities in dance and in inclusive dance. And so we want to kind of fill that gap and bring up more people um to work inclusively um and that'll go through universities and also hopefully some dance companies um as well that have rising dancers interested in teaching um we yeah are still in the planning stages for it to be launched in a couple of months but it's amazing that we can actually plan it now that we have the funding um part of what we're going to do as well we'll be giving um uh, professional development workshops and panel discussions with mm -hmm. some of the artists and companies that were in our first project, the film, um, and maybe with some new ones as well. Um, Amazing. Yeah. And I guess as well, looking at your core values of Parable Dance is how do you invest those into your into your practice and what you do? Um, that was sort of the basis of where we started the company. So we wanted to say, we said, what do we want to make sure we're doing with every project that we do and make sure that um, hopefully everyone that participates with us feels those values being um, executed as well. Um, I think we kind of, we work so well together anyway, because we have these same ideas about what, how, what our approach to inclusive dance is, they align nicely. Um, and it kind of just ballooned from there, I suppose. But, you know, we came up with quite a few, I think, serious values, which is important in the company. And then we realized actually like part of why we love this is because of how fun it is. So we have to, you know, make sure that we add that as well, because that is a huge, that's a huge part as well um, of everything. So once we kind of get all of the um, other aspects together, we want to make sure that everything is, is always fun to do as well. That's so cool. So when you are leading your workshops, um, do you, are these paid positions? Are people volunteering as well themselves here? Because as we do know, a lot of persons with disabilities can sometimes struggle to, to get work and to get opportunities and stuff. So um, are these actually paid opportunities that people are also receiving? Yeah, it's, it's really important to us that we provide paid opportunities for dancers with disabilities um, and that we're representing people with disabilities across um, every project that we do um, in the company because otherwise we're speaking for people instead of with people. Um, so yes, the projects where we've delivered, uh, we've delivered a carousel project where we were doing inclusive club nights. Um, yeah. with a team of uh, a learning disabled dancer and a non-disabled dancer team teaching together. Um, we've got a number of other projects coming up with Southeast Dance. We, um, for our film, we had 53% uh, representation uh, where people identified as having a disability so yeah it's um, hugely important to us that um we're providing paid opportunities and not having that expectation of people working for free because that is one expectation that we have quite a bit i know myself from panel discussions a lot of people just expect you to turn up for free and give up like two or three hours of your time and but then they go pay 
an actual member of talent and you're kind of like but we're all talent it's why we're on a panel but we don't get paid and there's just that assumption um so no it's really refreshing to hear that um people are being paid um for the work that in which they're doing yeah it's really important to us and there's other companies out there that are, are doing really fantastic work around uh, having kind of inclusive rep representation across their uh, teaching teams as well so companies like dance syndrome up in Lancashire um are a really great model for, for others to kind of look to so yeah I love Down syndrome I, I like watching um I used to go to the wake up and dance um I've seen that advertised on Twitter at one point so I attended some of their sessions and I like how they also run some of their sessions where um you'd have one member of the group and then a, then a non-disabled um person working with them to then lead the lessons as well I thought that was really nice and it, it was great I loved them they're fantastic I'm a trustee for them and I just yeah I love everything about what they're up to I I, I just think they're amazing I they definitely need to come on here one day as well <laughs> I'll tell them <laughs> brilliant and you used to do um volunteering um back in the day do you offer volunteering opportunities with them with within here as well so other people wanting to try out new things as well can get involved from a volunteering perspective Yes, absolutely. Um, so we we offer a range of different opportunities. It could be that, you know, supporting some of our administration side, um, but actually we're hoping to launch classes in Brighton, weekly classes in partnership with Carousel and Southeast Dance, um, which we'll be piloting. So kind of going out into the community and meeting people from September onwards. And then, then in January 22, starting those weekly groups. And we absolutely would love volunteers to come and and support those sessions and as well as that Erica and I both always really up for people just getting in touch and and if they want to come along and see some of our projects or you know they if you see a um a social media post about something we're doing if if, if there's a way we can involve you because one of the most important things to us is about supporting the next generation of of inclusive dance artists um, and the best way to do that is to just involve everyone as much as we can so yes do get Definitely. I think anyone listening to this, if you're wanting to, to be a dancer, if you're wanting to learn about inclusive practice, check out the Twitter, Facebook, the website and do reach out to Natasha and Erica and I'm sure they'd welcome your board. And with your film, where can people go to, to watch this? And then again, where if, if and when you get your sessions up and running, where could people possibly look to join and attend these? So if you, uh, if we've got a YouTube channel, so Parable Dance YouTube channel, and the film that we created is called Inclusive Practice is Good Practice. And uh, there's two versions, there's a BSL version and both are captioned. And uh, there's, a, there's a number of other kind of bits and bobs on that channel if people are interested in sort of trying out what we do and joining in. Um, in terms of the networks and panels and kind of the next phase of the project, if you follow us on social media, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, awesome. and, and our website is parabledance.co.uk. Amazing. Well, we'll ensure that we place all your links below. So that's your Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. If anyone wants to follow you, we'll ensure that we're putting them below for you as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank, thank you so much.